Do you think rugby players in general need to improve on thinking about retirement and life after rugby? Um, I think it's something that you you never really want to think. Obviously, you never want to think about it. You, you hope it's you always hope it's a long way away. But if you actually sit down and think about it, you you probably got sort of, if you're lucky ten to fifteen years of of playing rugby at any any kind of level. Um, and then it's body related. How, how your body lets you go. How your mind lets you go. I've seen people here that are perfectly fine one year, next year, completely different. Um, so I, I think you, know, you always try and tell lads that are younger than me, look, if you don't have anything, like for me, I've got no other qualifications than my A-level, so it's try and find somewhere, get a foot in the door somewhere, whether that's, do, you know, find what you like and, and try and get a foot in the door somewhere that, so you've got a direction at least of where you want to go. And I don't know if you saw, but Ellis Genge made some comments last week about um, loyalty. Um, I wondered how, did, how good is Gloucester Rugby uh, with helping players in their futures, I, I think you know, so far I've seen that Gloucester have been pretty good. You know, there's there's boys here that have worked hard and, and spent a lot of time at the club, and they've gone on to then then do certain things with the club. You look at Bucko when he was there, he then went to you know a short spell at Bristol, but came back straight as the academy manager. And for me, that worked really well. You know, he was my academy manager, and what we did with Bucko has helped me a lot to where I you know the player I am today. So I think in terms of that aspect, they've they, they do help you out. Yeah.